turbochargers are finding their way into normal cars in the name of economy, as opposed to performance. But how do they work? And more importantly, how can they help to improve the last of the internal combustion engines? Here we have an inline petrol engine. Fuel and air enter the cylinder, the mixture is ignited, and the expanding gases push the piston down. The piston pushes down on the crank, and the crank rotates. The crank transfers power through the gearbox, and this turns the wheels. There are a mind-boggling array of engine designs, but at its core, this is what an internal combustion engine does to convert fuel into movement. How much power an engine can produce is directly related to how much fuel it can burn in a given time. You can inject more fuel into the engine, but to use it, you also need to get more air into the cylinder, and that is where turbos come in. A turbocharger forces air into the engine, by harnessing energy that would otherwise be wasted. In a non-turbocharged, or naturally aspirated engine, once the fuel and air mixture has been burnt, the resulting waste gases are routed away from the engine, through the exhaust system. A turbocharger uses a turbine that sits in the exhaust system, and the passing gases cause the turbine to spin. This turbine is connected to a compressor via a rotating shaft. As the turbine spins the shaft, the compressor sucks air through the engine's air intake system. Normal atmospheric pressure will naturally push air into the engine, but a turbocharger is able to push more air into the engine in a given time. This allows more fuel to be burnt, and more power to be produced by the engine. This performance advantage has been applied extensively to create high-performance road vehicles, or to push race cars ever faster. The most prevalent use is in the turbo diesel engine, but the use of turbochargers has spread rapidly, and they are now exceedingly common in small capacity petrol engines too. This adoption of small capacity turbocharged petrol engines is mainly in the pursuit of increased efficiency, but the link between increased performance, better fuel economy, and lower emissions is not necessarily all that obvious. A turbo enhances performance by allowing more fuel to be burned within a given time, which doesn't inherently improve economy. You're not getting extra energy out of the fuel you're burning, but what turbocharging does is allow you to burn more fuel without increasing the size of your engine. This is where a lot of the economy and emission improvements are derived from. A smaller, and therefore lighter, turbocharged engine can match the performance of a larger and heavier, naturally aspirated engine. By using a smaller engine, there is less overall weight for the vehicle to haul around, and the reduction in the number of cylinders reduces the total amount of friction generated by the engine, which itself saps power. This is how turbocharging turns performance gains into economy gains, by making smaller engines viable in larger cars. However, there's more to the story. Adding a turbocharger adds complexity, and therefore weight. Whilst a compact turbo itself isn't all that heavy, there are a number of components that usually need to be added alongside the turbo. As a gas is compressed, it heats up, so the compressed air that the turbo outputs has also been heated to around 120 degrees. This presents a problem, as hot air is less dense, and the entire point of a turbocharger is to force more air into the engine. To mitigate this, many turbocharged engines also include an intercooler, which pulls heat out of the compressed air and dissipates it. This results in cool, dense air being pushed into the engine, allowing for increased performance, but the intercooler system, along with its piping, all add more weight and complexity. Turbochargers themselves get extremely hot too, as the exhaust gases that power them can reach several hundred degrees. So to keep the turbo running safely, oil circulates through it, which often requires the addition of an oil cooler, further increasing the complexity and weight. These drawbacks have historically led to turbo engines claiming impressive economy figures on paper, but in reality falling short. Yet, as turbo design has improved, and more importantly, they are now more readily paired with smaller capacity engines, these hypothetical economy figures have begun to translate into real-life outcomes. With the push towards electrification, the age of the internal combustion engine is coming to an end. But the intelligent use of turbocharging can help to make the last of these engines that little bit more efficient. This video has been brought to you by Insightful, a streaming platform that offers access to thousands of short, fun, educational videos based on your areas of interest 
all ad free. With the invite code MEDIAWARD, you'll be able to get early access to the platform and find exclusive content from myself and other creators. Feed your curiosity. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, perhaps consider subscribing. If you want to support the channel and get early access and extra content, you can support my work on Patreon. Links are on screen and down in the description.